Um, so good afternoon. Hello, uh, hello from Warsaw. Uh, thank you very much for introducing me. Thank you very much also, Mr. Ipka, for your really interesting presentation. Um, and thank you very much, our Albanian partners, for inviting us to take part uh, in this panel. There's a large group of teachers from Albania who who's following our activity, and we are we are very happy about it. Um, actually, I would like to start from the. Um, Sorry. Uh, yeah, I would like to start from the from the chart uh, to you know to to keep your attention. Um, I've been introduced as a project coordinator of the High Story Lessons uh, online platform, and this is the platform with teaching resources for history teachers. And we recently led um, a survey. Uh, in which we are trying to um, uh, to research our target group. Uh, it wasn't a big one, but like 80 people took part. And uh, firstly, we asked them uh, on which of the following topics you would need more resources to use while working with the students. And uh, as you can see, the the the, the reply which gained the, the, the like the, the big majority of the votes it was about totalitarian regimes and i think it's a good news for us here in the room uh, taking part in the seminar that there is a really uh, there's a need uh, for the resources related to the to the totalitarian regimes uh, what i will talk about during this short presentation uh, firstly i would like to talk about different approaches practiced by the enrs our institution european network remembrance and solidarity towards addressing repression under totalitarian regimes within the classroom and why this is important. And secondly, I'll um, present our ready to use resources for teachers um, and educators which are uh, available online. Uh, just a few words about the ENRS. So we are um, European network, so network of countries which are Poland, Germany, Hungary, Slovakia, and Romania. Uh, those are the countries marked in yellow, but also the countries marked in blue. Those are uh, our observer countries. Uh, but also we're uh, we're working with several, uh, um, not several, but a lot of different institutions across the Europe. So um, so you can see uh, you can see them on the on the slide. Mm. And our um, uh, our activity focuses on the educational projects, or but also projects uh, who are designed for the academics. Uh, we've got um, actually we've got uh, in, in this time we've got uh, two um, traveling exhibitions which are traveling across the Europe. Um, and uh, I think uh, if you are into uh, educational projects, uh, I'll briefly speak about the project which is called Sound in the Silence. This is. Uh, a project in which students from different European countries, they meet in one of the memory places. Um, and then uh, they uh, they have a workshop with artists and they, they prepare their final performance. Uh, this is the, the, the methodology which is used here. It's called History Through Art. And uh, next, uh, next year, 2024, we will meet in Romania in one of the memory places in Romania. So if you're working with students or teachers, you can uh, you can stay tuned you can uh, you can look for the uh, for the application uh, which will be available in february uh, on our website and the next invitation already is that uh, our like one of our most Im important project uh, it's called european remembrance symposium and uh, next year we'll speak we'll meet actually in warsaw uh, so the topic of the of the of this conference uh, it's, it will be uh, commemorating and narrating freedom and uh, our goal is to meet there to exchange our experiences about memory culture. So, um, so that's already uh, an invitation. Um, I already uh, mentioned High Story Lessons website. Uh, you can see the uh, the address of the website here, and um, this website is available in seven languages, which are Polish, English, German, Slovak, Czech, Romanian, and hung Hungarian. Uh, and within this project, we are proposing ready to use teaching resources. Uh, we are um, involving historians to prepare them, but also teachers. Uh, we, we really, we're trying to, to give the floor to the teachers themselves. For example, they are speakers during the webinars. So when they are testing some uh, teaching resources, they can uh, they can show them already to other teachers. They can speak how how they used um, uh, how they used our teaching resources uh, uh, in practice. And uh, I will 
present briefly four approaches uh, we uh, we are using uh, in our uh, in our um, in our daily work. Uh, first one, it would be the speaking about the memory culture. Uh, here on the background, you can see a photo of a pin with a black ribbon. This is the symbol we are using to commemorate the uh, 23rd of August, which is date uh, day for victims of the totalitarian regimes. And we believe that using important days, such as 23 August or 27th of January, Mm, which is uh, which is day of um, remembrance for the Holocaust. Um, uh, it might be uh, the opportunity to raise uh, selected topics and, uh, for example, to uh, in schools um, uh, to speak uh, about them um, only briefly. We know we know that because it might all it, it might uh, it might be a starting point for teacher a date within the school year, but uh, but it. But, it, it won't solve everything, but uh, of course the teachers they can uh, they can uh, propose the follow up activities to the students um, after the the day of commemoration. Uh, that's what we proposed for the um, um, national for the international day of remembrance of the Holodomor, which took place on twenty fifth of November. Uh, so we prepared uh, an essay, presentation, and lesson plan. And uh, because of the 90th anniversary of the Holodomor, so the Great Famine uh, in Ukraine, in Ukraine, 1932-1933, uh, um, why we believe that speaking about the Holodomor uh, was important. Uh, first of all, we would like to honor all the victims of the Holodomor, but also we believe that uh, the knowledge about the uh, about the famine suffered gives us an ins insight into the systematic and state organized violence so students they can discover the state stages which led to the genocide and then learn uh, how to recognize uh, the symptoms uh, of how the country is systematically falling uh, into into the totalitarian regime um, and to observe what's going on around them and obviously the the reason was that uh, like during the times of the ongoing war we wanted to pay attention to the to the ukrainian history um, so uh, that's why we proposed the presentation in which students can find the photos of the memory places, uh, like map, short description, and uh, the aim is to um, um, show to, to for young people to learn to analyze the public sphere in which they are living, to to you know to see the the memory memory places around them, and uh, secondly, this approach might be more suitable for young students because here you don't need to show the um, photos historical photos which are uh, very drastic for the photos from the great famine but they can learn through uh, through the symbols for example the symbol of the wheat which is important for the Ukrainian culture and for the great famine um the second approach is uh, individual stories I think it's like very common for the his 20 20 centuries history. Uh, for the 23rd of August, we are producing a short spot, short video in which we are bringing back memory of one person. For example, last year it was Boris Yomachenko, who was the Holocaust survivor, and he died in the, um, he died being 96 years old in March in Donetsk, caused by the Russian invasion. Uh, or, for example, the story of Elżbieta Fitzowska. Um, I think that I'll, uh, I think you can you can just uh, discover her story through uh, through our traveling exhibition uh, between life and death. Uh, it's very inspiring. Um, but I will move to the to the third approach, which is critical thinking. I know that during the seminar you spoke a lot about it. Uh, here on the slide, you can see uh, the examples of titles of uh, lesson plans and articles related to the uh, to fighting disinformation. Uh, so um, you can see um, that it might help students to track biased information uh, and uh, which influenced the history of the 20th century. So you can see historical fallacies in Nazi propaganda or in the communist propaganda. Uh, so it equips the learners with tools to fight with, uh, with, uh, with disinformation in the historical context. 
Mm, and here on the slide, again, you can see a chart from the survey I already spoke about. So uh, we might see then that encouraging critical thinking is the thing which is uh, which is very important for for the for the teachers, uh, and that's why we want to provide them with teaching resources. Um, that's why we also developed a lesson plan, which is called 90 years of hiding the truth, because we would wanted to show the Holodomor, the Great Famine, as an example of the long-standing disinformation campaign. And here, uh, students, they can compare um, two press um, recalls about the, uh, about the Great Famine. Uh, there's one journalist who's saying that uh, the Great Famine happened, that, uh, that there are uh, people uh, dying in the Soviet Ukraine, uh, which was called Garrett Jones. You might know them because it was a very famous movie about him. And another one who's called Walter Duranty, who's saying that it's not true, that of course there's hunger, but it's not uh, deadly for uh, people. And students, they might took two... Uh, press releases about the event and they can compare it and think for themselves which one is more re reliable. Uh, of course, they can uh, also analyze the Soviet propaganda poster and uh, answer the, the questions whether it's re reliable or not. And the last one, uh, fourth approach, uh, I called it different source materials. Um, we are just trying to provide uh, students with different source materials like propaganda poster, tweets, book covers, interviews, and so on. Uh, of course, to develop student skills in analyzing various historical sources. Uh, we know that it's uh, difficult for teachers. Um, yeah, we've seen, uh, I, I read also the report of the Observatory of Teaching History that uh, people there are claiming that uh, using teaching resource materials is uh, very important but they're not very much actually always into using them but we but uh, i think that uh, we just we we cannot give up uh, on uh, providing people with uh, source materials and it might be difficult to use it it might be uh, long but uh, but maybe there are ways to show it uh, in the in the interesting way in the in the classroom too uh, so um, you can see our uh, information about us here on the screen uh, and my email. So we are very much encourage you to stay in touch. Um, yeah, thank you very much.